Welcome back to the channel everyone. It's great to have you here. My name is David and I am on a mission to build the perfect beehive, at least for my situation. This whole process began a little over a year and a half ago when I was just getting into beekeeping for the first time and I started researching different beehive designs and there were so many out there to choose from and Langstroth and Warre and Top Bar and Horizontal Hives and so I started doing my research and uh, learning a little bit about each one, their pros and cons and I came to the realization that none of them had all of the features for what I was looking for and I just couldn't find the perfect design out there and I happened to have access to a wood shop and I happened to have a little skill in engineering design and so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to make my own. Last winter I designed and built my first beehive and it's been operating throughout this past season. We've had a lot of fun with it. Um, the bees seem to be doing well. They're still surviving out here in this cold Massachusetts winter but there are still some things that I think I can improve on and some new ideas that I wanna try this winter. You see, my old hive still needs to have insulation wrapped around it in the winter, and that's just not something that I wanna to have to do every season. I'd much rather the insulation be built in from the start, and that way I don't have to worry about it at all, uh, especially since insulation can also help in the summer. Um, so that's one design change that I really wanna make this winter. Um, a second is that I developed these types of frames that I'm calling double deep frames and while they worked well, I think they can be more refined and a little bit more elegant. I made them very sturdy because I didn't want them to break, but I think I went a little bit overboard in the dimensions and they're a little chunky. So this winter I think I can pare those down, give the bees a bit more space to build their comb. That's going to result in happier bees, more honey for me. That's a win-win. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself here because I don't simply want to make changes to my old design. I really want to think critically about each component and each step um, from the base up. So I've come up with three criteria that I really want to hit and this is what they are. Criteria number one is that this hive has to be good for honeybees. And I know that may sound extremely obvious and it is but I don't want to forget that fact as I'm building this hive from the ground up. And when I think about keeping bees happy, this is what comes to mind. So A, I need to protect the bees from inclement weather, rain or snow. B, I need to protect the colony from any creatures that might want to get to the colony to steal their uh, honey reserves or pollen reserves. C, I need to provide adequate ventilation and insulation both in the summer and winter to maintain a nice stable climate inside the hive. D, I don't want to disturb the hive when I'm making my inspections. So I don't want to be cracking open boxes that reveal large quantities of bees. I'd much rather be able to pull up a single frame and inspect that one leaving the rest of the hive undisturbed. And E, I need to be able to expand and contract this hive. As the bee colony grows in the summer and diminishes in the winter, I need my hive to be able to follow that population. So an easy way to do that would be great. So keeping all that in mind, I really need to focus on the needs and wants of the honeybees. They are the top priority in this hive and secondarily to all that comes my experience with it. But at the forefront, should always be the honeybees. Design criteria number two is that this hive has to be easy to use, whether by me or, or someone else. Um, I really enjoy sharing my beekeeping practice with friends and family, and if they don't know as much as me or feel a little uncomfortable, I don't want that to stop them from getting to experience the wonderful world of bees. So I really need this hive to be intuitive in its design, I don't want it to be complicated. It should be really simple and anyone who walks up to it should know how to use it. This hive also has to be easy to maintain and easy to manage. So I don't want to have to add insulation in the fall. I want that to be built in. I don't want to have to reach way inside the beehive to pull up debris from the bottom. The bottom should just hinge out. And above all else, I don't want to have to lift anything heavy with this hive. 
So I will not have any full honey supers weighing a ton for me to throw my back out on. Um, and I think instead of having a top that you pick up and move away, I'll make that hinged as well. Just so everything in the hive is really easy to use, it's never going to present a barrier for me to go do a hive inspection is because I don't want to have to deal with the hive. The hive should come secondarily to the bees and that's the way I intend to design it. And criteria number three, which is a little bit of icing on the cake if you ask me, is I want this hive to be easy to build. And that's just for my sake. I'd rather not spend a ton of time cutting intricate joinery as I kind of did with my last design. Um, I've learned since then. But I also want it to be easy to make for anyone out there who wants to build this. So I intend to design this with a lot of simple shapes, um, simple cuts, and it should all go together very seamlessly, very easily. And while there may be a few more parts due to there being less joinery, I'd rather it be that way because driving a nail is a lot easier than setting up saws and making intricate cuts. So keeping all those design criteria in mind, let's talk about the actual hive that I've designed. So here it is. I'm pretty happy with it. And the first thing you may notice is that it is a horizontal hive. And I really like horizontal hives simply for their ease of use. I can open up the lid and all of the frames are there, easy access, you know, I can pick up which ones I want. Unlike a Langstroth hive where you have to break open boxes and then realign them afterwards, that's just a little more tricky and uh, not as easy for someone new to beekeeping uh, or who may not know what they're doing. So I've opted to go with the horizontal hive much like my hive last year and I think it's going to work out really well. Now, this horizontal hive is based around a set of 25 frames, and that can obviously be reduced with a follower board um, to allow me to have a smaller colony in there and then slowly expand it to 25 frames, which should support even the largest colony at the peak of their strength. But 25 frames should also allow me to have two colonies potentially existing in the same hive at the same time, uh, if I had a divider board down the middle, of course. But it just adds that extra versatility that I'm looking for um, and an extra use case for this hive. Making up this set of 25 frames are what I call double deep frames. And for those of you that don't know, this is a concept I came up with last year. And what a double deep frame is, is essentially an extra deep frame that can be split apart so that each half can fit in a standard honey extractor. Now, why would you want to do this? Well. An extra deep frame performs very well for overwintering bees. And that's because bees tend to cluster at the beginning of winter down towards the base of their hive. And as, the, as they consume their honey stores, they'll slowly migrate upwards. So the more comb depth you can have, and these frames offer about 16 to 16 and a half inches of comb depth, the more you have, uh, the better the bees' chances are at surviving the winter. But of course, you're never going to be able to fit uh, an 18, or, you know, a 16-inch deep frame in a honey extractor. They just don't make those. But with this design, you can actually break the two halves apart. Each half is now the equivalent of a Langstroth deep frame. And as I'm sure you know, uh, most honey extractors are designed to handle at least a Langstroth deep frame. So these double deep frames allow you to get that. Uh, maximum comb depth um, that you would in like a lay-ins hive, for example, um, but it allows you to use standard honey extracting equipment that you can find in the United States, which is super convenient. And I'll talk a lot more about the design of these frames in another video, but I just wanted to give a brief overview because they're really the foundation of this hive and all dimensions from the rest of the hive are based on these double deep frames. So using the dimensions of the double deep frame and then extrapolating that out 25 times, I could get the dimensions for the rest of the hive, um, that being the walls, the roof, and the bottom. All of these components will be insulated. The walls will have an R value of 10, the roof will have an R value of about 20, and then the bottom will have an R value of around 5. And that's just what I've come up with to try and mimic a natural hive in the wild. You know, bees often build their colonies in the hollows of thick trees, 
and those thick walled trunks provide excellent insulation value. I think a common misconception is insulation is only valuable in the winter, but insulation does not uh, provide heat. It just simply slows the transfer of heat. So it's my opinion that the insulation will offer value both in the winter and the summer uh, just to slow that transfer of heat. And we can take a look at the front wall of this hive to see how it'll actually be constructed. Um, it's built much the same way as a regular stick framed house. So it's got an interior sheathing, um, some framing material, which I'll probably call rails or beams just to not get them confused with actual frames. Um, and then an exterior siding. And when you sandwich all those together, they leave these pockets that I can fill with XPS or expanded polystyrene foam. All of the walls are built in the same manner with the inner lining, framing material, insulation, and then siding. Uh, but the last thing I wanna talk about is the roof. Now, I've designed this roof to have four inches of insulation, which gives an R value of about 20. And the reason I wanna do that is most heat will escape a hive through its top. And so I wanna minimize the amount of heat loss, especially in the winter. Um, but the second reason I, I really want a well insulated top is because as most beekeepers know, one of the main dangers of overwintering bees is the moisture that they produce with their own breath. And it will rise as warm air rises in the hive. If it hits the top of the hive, which is cold, it will condense and then drip down onto the bees. And that's often what will cause a colony to die in the winter. It's not the cold temperatures, but the fact that they're getting showered on with cold water constantly. So it's my thinking that having a super thick, super insulative roof will prevent any cold layer from forming at the top of this hive. And it will keep this nice warm pocket of air um, for the bees to exist in. And any cold air that comes in through the entrance will come up the sides a little bit. And so any condensation that occurs will happen on the sides of the hive where it'll just drip down and the bees will be left unaffected and happy. And of course, that is the end goal of this hive. As you well know, bees are the number one priority. And of course, there's a lot more to talk about. I put a lot of thought into this design. And so there are a lot of things that I want to explain in future videos but I just wanted to give an overview uh, of this hive design, some of the major differences of last year's design. So stay tuned for some future videos, which will go into more detail, especially about the double deep frames and about the actual construction of the rest of this hive. That all being said, guys, I hope I've piqued your interest and you'll stick around for the actual build of this hive. You know, getting to this point with the CAD model, is, uh, it's been really fun, but I think the, the actual build is going to be something special. Um, you know, building version 2.0 of something is always exciting because you're taking that idea to the next level and just trying to perfect it that bit more. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.